In the bottom right hand corner of the map from Basilisk, the blue Zerg player, this is Serral. In this best of five grand final in the Kung Fu Cup number four in this winter season. In the top left, it is our Red Protoss player from Psystorm, Max Pax. Okay, then let's see what happens. Let's see who is going to get the better of the other today. Serral generally wins against Max Pax. Yeah, Serral generally wins against Max Pax. But, um. Max Pax usually puts up a good fight and definitely can draw some games out into some longer scenarios and everything, so. Uh, like I say, I always think this is an interesting series. Like I say, it's really going to be a fun one, hopefully. That's what we want. Jump on the indie cam as well so you guys can't complain about my observing for the series. I observed one game earlier, immediately everyone complained about observing. Unbelievable. Alright, Grand Finals. Uh, best of five, of course, then as well. Several uh, having a pretty smooth run to get here. Oliveira, he kind of made pretty short work of. Solo was a little bit of a bumpy ride in the semis, but was pretty okay there too, honestly. Uh, Max Pax took out Kia pretty comfortably, took out Clem comfortably. Actually, Max Pax has also had a pretty smooth run. These guys have just not really been tested today by their opponents, I would say. Is that a fair statement? I would say they've not really been tested by their opponents today. It's been pretty smooth sailing for them. And that's obviously kind of interesting, because now, if they've both had good days, if they're both playing good StarCraft, now they meet one another. Are they really going to, you know, are they going to be able to kind of really cause a fight with each other? Yeah, I really hope they can, obviously. That's how a queen comes about, and we get ourselves set up for a little bit. Couple queens, couple drones, just continuing about then for a few moments to get all that set up. Stargate's on the way through. Again, Nexus is about to finish up as well. So again, that completed in just a moment. And these couple lings going after that probe. Probe is going to take a few more nibbles. And he's going to drop the pylon down. The drone comes around to go after that pylon as well. The Adept is going to come shading across too. Just going to come straight over to try and help out with this. These next couple of moments as well. Just going to have our Adept continue in. The Lings will take some damage. And again, Link Speed coming up. Void Ray coming up. The Warp Gate all coming through. All the goodness on the way right now. Void, Warp Gate kicking on in, a couple of probes coming out, Hatchery and the Link Speed building up as well at the moment, so all of that coming through. The Queens and the Links build up, Link Speed's over halfway done. So Rickleson, thanks so much for the 18 month resub, welcome back. Thank you so much for resubscribing today, guys. We're on the verge again, past 900 subs again. I was obviously gone for the weekend. We dropped back below, but you guys have been awesome today. Thank you again for all those subs earlier. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for dropping your primes on the channel and all everything that keeps on allowing us to run StarCraft. Appreciate it. Void Ray coming over. The Adepts will shade by, looking to see what they can do. The Queens are there to push the Void Ray back as well, so a little bit of back and forth continues at the moment. Armuno, thank you so much as well for the prime sub. Thank you. As a couple queens will fight and, well, deflect these adepts away. So the adepts get pushed away. The queens will continue on to them. The lings looking to see where they might be able to do things. The adepts are actually going to start uh, shading now, but the lings will catch the shade. They'll not get a kill, but obviously putting some pressure on. And that's what you like to do, right? I mean, put some pressure on. Keep your opponents scared, even when it's like, you know, they feel as though they're doing things that they should be able to get away with, basically. Let's come over. A couple of adepts take some shots. We have ourselves the Void Ray firing up. Link still getting chased back. Resonating Glaives coming through. And that gateway count is increasing. So Max Pack's playing some Star Glaives here.
And then Robo Facility just continuing in. A couple extra gates coming out. Hatcher then coming up. The Hatcher coming in. The Adept still there. And a couple of links still getting knocked down for the moment. So, and damage beginning to be dealt. As we got the plus one missile upgrade coming through as well. A couple of Adepts still going after some of those Zerglings. And the Lings actually come for a wraparound on these Adepts as well. First one goes down, the second Adept is going to fall also. It's a nice little pick off on those, nice and quickly. And again, the Resonating Glaives is going to be finishing fairly soon. Prism continuing up. And yeah, plus one missiles, Overlord Speed, all that goodness. Still being brought into play as well. Now, uh, Overlord Speed is not exactly going to help you against the Glaive Adepts, but it could be interesting for a counterattack following this Glaive Adept opening. If Sarah wants to get aggressive himself, but he does need to survive this attack right now. Currently in the process of building Hydras, they aren't exactly going to help much either. And I think Max Pax might be able to get enough done here with this initial attack. It's catching Serral as a surprise. Like I say, the Hydras on the way definitely don't help. I love the two Adepts staying behind. As we will break through this wall off, we will gain access. I mean, it buys you time though, with Serral and time. Maybe that's your best friend. Can you get enough up to really stabilize here? Hydra pops, I honestly I think I'd love a right click on the Hydra. Hydras are going to die so quickly if Adepts just target them. I think I absolutely would love to see that just getting taken down straight away as more Hydras are going to start taking damage. Nine drones all going down. The extra drones deciding where they want to come back in here. The extra Adepts just warped in. Six Adepts. And again with those Glaives, that's the sort of point where these Adepts start to do so much. We have got ourselves Adepts still on the third base as well. So they are still going huge. They are still having a great time. Finally, the Hydra Count is starting to look a little bit better against this, but I just don't think it'll ever be enough. You can see the Hydra Count. It might push this back, but the damage is done. 30 workers killed. These last Adepts just getting a couple extra, just making up as much damage as possible here. This game is absolutely turning into, well, the Max Pack show. Max Pack's looking to open with a 1-0 lead in today's Kung Fu Cup Grand Finals. Queen's coming up. Adepts getting chased away. Do grab a couple of adepts there again. 32 dead drones. A few more adepts will warp in on the third base. Void Ray Stalkers in the sentry continue to settle down as well. Hydra speed is coming up, so continue bringing the hydras uh, into play also. Like I say, it's kind of a necessity here as so well. You've got to go into these hydras as a follow up, but you're going to be very weak because your drone count got slashed in half. Now you might say, well look, Serral's catching back up on drones so quickly. Well, he is, but it's coming at the cost of army. All this time he should have already been at 60 workers producing units. Instead, he's been rebuilding drones and he's just about now finished. So his further tech is only just now starting up, only just now will he go back into army. And now by the time he has Hydras really swarming the map, there's multiple Colossi out, you know? This is absolutely now becoming a completely unfair situation in favor of Max Pax. And Serral's just going to GG as... Adepts get even more damage done. He knows that this is not going anywhere anytime soon for him. And it's going. And seeing whether Serral can indeed put one on the board for himself here. Or if Max Pax will keep him on zero. Greg Balo, thank you so much for the three month resub on Prime. Welcome back. As we kick off into the top right hand side, our blue Zerg player from Basilisk. Down a game. Not often you get to see that say that about this man. It is sterile. Up one in the bottom left, our red Protoss from Psystorm Gaming, Max Pax. Game number two. All right, well, the first gateway goes down the low ground. The hatchery gets placed. No immediate probe across the map for Max Pax. Serral goes for the early hatch as well, so this is definitely a win for Max Pax because he doesn't commit into trying to delay the Nexus or delay the hatchery. He doesn't commit to do that. And yet, Serral plays around the idea that he would, so yeah, it definitely works well in uh, Max Pax's. Fever.
how to scout adepts. Well, that's kind of the, the secret of the strength of that build, right? It's a little bit tough because the Voidra is there to stop the Overlord from getting in. I almost feel like if you see a Voidra, you've got to be cautious of that possibility in the first place, and then you just got to keep Lings active on the map, trying to spot for what is being warped in, you know, trying to get a read on what's, you know, where money is being spent, for example. So yeah, in terms of what Soil can do differently, I think uh, it's very hard to directly scout the Twilight Council. It's much more about being active on the map and trying to figure a few things out here and there in general on that as... There's the Nexus going down the natural, Cybercore coming up, a couple Queens on the way in as well. So all of that just coming through. And yeah, Serval's Hatchery finished, a couple of Queens on the way. Like I say, definitely a win for Max Packs. Not scouting against someone who opens with that super early Hatchery is really amazing. Because the early Hatch is, meant, is designed so that when you get there with the probe to try and block the Hatch, the Hatch is already going to be there, and then you've wasted your early probe across the map for no gain. But yeah, Max Pax kind of calls the right uh, the right choice this time to not scout until a later point of this game, which right now is still apparently <laughs> a thing of just no scouting at all. And again, at some point you do expect him to scout, but I guess we'll wait and see exactly how it pans out still. Ends up making its way out across the map. Obviously just going to go poke around. This is the first bit of information Max Pax will be picking up on. He's really relying on the fact that Serral is unlikely to do anything super greedy or super cheesy or anything. He's Maybe super greedy is fine because obviously what Max Pax is doing is fairly greedy. But yeah, just utilizing the fact that he doesn't expect anything weird out of Serral so you'll be able to get away with this. And then just kind of playing from that point on seems to be the current plan of action. Poetry is still Chrono Boosting along, the Warp Gate coming up, and the Adept making its way down to the bottom side. Arkle is already building, the warp gate coming through. And again, link speed is coming up as the Void Ray is going to go for a Overlord here. So it's going to go and pick our way through that. Again, that link speed about to finish. The Oracle's about to be done. I can see the warp gate coming up as well. Queens get there, the Voidray already taking some damage, getting pushed over that right hand side. Well, like Council coming through, the Nexus halfway done, the Forge building. And again, a few drones, a few lings coming up, Spore Crawlers continuing in, the Queen is going to get pushed back by the Void, the Oracle coming through as well, Oracle is going to go, and that Queen is indeed going to go down, so that Queen will fall. Nice catch that. It was nice to get rid of a Queen, I mean, that's not really meant to happen. As this time, Max Pax, a bit more of the standard opener, but you've got to be afraid of Serral, because this could be Glaives again, right? And maybe that's the plan from Max Pax, you make it look a bit like a Glaives follow, but in reality, you're going just Twilight, Robo, Forge. That should be much more so into, like, a Blink play or so, and much less... Or, or Charge. Yeah, of course, Charge nowadays is very popular too. Charge and Archons and Immortals. Yeah. Just, whatever it is, it's not going to be Glaives. But you're going to try and make it look like Glaives, because everything else looks fairly similar initially. And it's just going to cause Serral to be a little bit more cautious about his build, and he's going to try and get away with a little bit less at first, which obviously makes this kind of an interesting factor overall. Dodge plus one attack, Temple Archives all building through, the few gateways still coming out. Just bringing that through as well. We do have uh, Ling's actually going to catch a couple of the Adepts in the uh, Mineral line there. First Adept going to go down, make that two, so two Adepts dead. So that is a nice catch indeed, so getting rid of those without losing anything especially. Just making sure the Adepts do not deal damage. It's a good defense from Serral, and now he begins to bring his units across the map so he can look for an opportunity himself after dealing with those Adepts. He's not worried about anything back at home for a little while, so he really feels like he can come across the map and do this very comfortably. That's exactly what he will try to do as the Queen gets there as well to push the Oracle back. Things coming across, the Probe takes a little bit of damage. Gateways and a couple of Archons continue through also. Charge on the plus one, also in production. As our Void Restore and a couple of Zealots hang out on the third base, the Prism comes across with a couple of units inside as well, so also looking to try and get something done there. The Lings are 
Moving back around, and uh, Voidre gonna come over, Stalker there to poke away at the Overseer a couple of moments. It's a big warp and aggressive timing here from Max Pax. He is on eight gates already. His initial hatchery gonna go down. Serral already has a base on the right side as his third. This would be his fourth. Already going down a fourth base though is kind of a somewhat big deal because that would be three bases to three bases. So it's definitely not ideal for a third player, no doubt there. Hatchery will indeed go down. Extra round of Zealots warping in. Robo Bay and a second Robo facility coming up too at the moment. And again, Hydras and Queens joining together. Just looking for the idea of poking forward and trying to get a little bit of something done. Zealots and Archons coming through already. Going to start jumping on top of that Queen right away. With some dropping a few more zealots in, so they are going to get a chance to go. We got some damage dealt as well. It's a little bit of coming out of those. Plenty of hydras coming up, plus two missiles coming through. Musco augments also being produced. Bringing all of that through for the moment as the couple colossi continue to build up. And those numbers are on. I was backed it up, but it is not going to be in time. We need detection provided. The hydras get the kill. And a couple of zealots just coming back in off the prison. We're going to try and now make the difference as well as they take that chance. Jump on top of a couple of units here. The queen's still pushing the prison back, but still only lost shield, so it will regenerate to HP. And it just means that that prison can stay pretty active and pretty, uh, pretty much just continuously looking for, well, more damage, right, at any possible moment. Serral still only on three bases, denying a fourth potential of max packs on the left-hand side of the map. But obviously only on three bases of his own is, is really still not ideal. It's not where you want to be as a Zerg. It means that the Protoss is mining just as much as you three base to three base. And as a Zerg, you typically want to mine more. Especially as Colossi start to come out to fight against these Hydras. And Max Pax knows he can be in the middle of the map here. And he will do exactly that. Be in the middle. Meet Serral on the, uh, on the road. And yeah, just start to knock this army back. Make sure that it does not feel as though it can be... A nice aggressive force, make sure it feels as though it should be in general. Just be in some trouble as continue to come through. A couple more units coming around there. Things Hydra's coming across as well, just making our way around for a few moments. Seeing ourselves the Link Hydra. Right across the edge. And Zeld Archon Colossus actually continue to chase those Hydras down, so a little bit of a chase down happening right there, and we are actually going to get a little bit of a distance on that one as we have the Colossi now getting surrounded, so Max Pack's going to lose both of those, and did he chase forward a little bit too much? Yeah, I think so. There's not really a reason to be losing your Colossi. More Colossi you have, the better off you're going to be. You don't need to make magic happen right now. You're already in a really good position. The last thing you need, you know... The last thing you need is to get into this kind of really kind of weird, like, oh, I need to make plays right now. That's the absolutely last thing you need to be doing, honestly. I'm kind of sad that he tried to do something almost, because now I feel as though Max Pax is kind of thrown what was a pretty darn good position. Several is still on three bases, guys. I mean, yeah, Max Pax was denying the fourth. My issue wasn't that. My issue was, while well, you're denying a fourth, why are your other two Colossi out trying to deal damage to a group of Hydras? This is going to be... Uh, well, uh, this is going to be, I think, 1-1 at this point. I don't think there's much else, much else to say on this one. As we have a couple more Hydras coming through, and this should just be about it. So it's uh, going to chase a few Hydras down. Several, okay, I mean... Okay, well, what, are, what do we have going on here? He kills 24 probes. Work counts are now even. Max Max still has a fourth base, to be fair. And if he can just reset with a little bit more army, maybe this is still very, very good. Maybe this is still playable, in fact. As crazy as that may seem, Archons and Zelds joined up together. I just come in, we're just gonna have to go with the fourth base, but that's something you can do, because this would still be three bases to three bases. Max Pax just needs units, and again, getting units right now seems to be the big issue. Ah, frustrating. Like I say, it was those Colossi out in the open going down, that was the big issue, as now... Mm, Hydras are just getting forwards. Can we get another Colossus up? We lost the Robos when the Hydras got into the natural, too, which was a big issue. 
So we lost some of the production that would have allowed you to rebuild into what you really need here. Like I say, also just a problem is Plus is halfway through, the Hydra's coming up, the Ling's coming out. And Zarkon's still going through, looking for Overlord's over there. So I'll take him behind this. Finally a fourth base in the 3 o'clock position that Max Max is not getting on top of. Anytime soon, at least he's going to start sending a few zealots in that direction, but I feel like it's Zeral. Is he really going to let just a handful of zealots get a denial on that base? I'd be very, very shocked if he did. Approach speed continues up, and we just have ourselves the... I just coming to the right side. Now going to have Vipers as well, which is obviously great. Although, that said, you're also going to have, on the return side of that, you're also going to actually have yourself a uh, couple of Storms available. And that's obviously a good tech forward, given the state of things right now from Serral's, uh, from Max Pax's point of view. So, like I say, I like what Max Pax is doing. I just feel like it's going to be way too late to really make enough of a difference. Not currently really a believer. Maybe I'm just a hater. <laughs> Maybe I'm just a hater. Now, I I mean, I think Max X's position, like I say, given enough time and, and current armies maybe staying the same, maybe it's okay, but I think that's the crazy part. Like, why would the armies stay the same? Surely not, you know? Why would you let that happen if you're, you know, if you're Serral here? You know, you want to go fight and you want to go and make things, you know, happen, of course. I don't see there being any reason for you to kind of slow things down in any of that, so I definitely don't expect that to be the situation that arises, not in the slightest. Storm's coming down, but our single Colossus is now on all the splash damage that really remains. Archons aren't going to really do enough of a job here. I think that that is going to mean that we have got ourselves a... GG more or less on the horizon. We see the Roach Hydra just chasing through. Serral maxed out. Max Pax is not. Max Pax tries to come from two sides, but the Hydras, again, a, a unit which, when they hit critical mass, really do just patch, uh, pack such a punch. I feel like that's exactly where we are at right now, so. This does very much so. Feel as though we are going to have ourselves Serral tying this series up one to one in this best of five grand final. And there it is. He gets it done. That uh, is going to be. All tied up. Man, I, I don't really keep up with GSL that much anymore, if I'm going to be completely honest as well. GSL is a uh, an event which I just don't see as... It's probably going to sound really dumb, but it's like, out of all the events to keep up on, I feel like GSL isn't really it anymore. Especially in group stages, like, you can usually just look at the results of groups and then kind of be like, okay, you know, maybe watch final day, I don't know. For me, GSL just isn't really it anymore. Unfortunately, I'd rather watch uh, other events. I mean, I cast so many events anyways, I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's rare that I specifically go out of my way to then try and catch up on things in another manner, but... Um, yeah. Who plays tomorrow? Tomorrow's Classic. Who else plays tomorrow? Classic. Sue, maybe? I don't know who else is in the group. Off the top of my head. Am I bad caster, guys? Not watching GSL? Probably. Probably a little bit. Probably a little bit. That's okay, though. Could be wrong about this. GSL tons of upsets. Yeah, I'm not saying, obviously, like, if there's cool results, then sure, but, like, a lot of the times in previous GSL seasons up until this one, it's really been a case of, like, you kind of know what's going to happen, you know? Like, a lot of it really has been kind of somewhat set in stone ahead of time with the expected players just kind of doing the expected things, and then we just kind of, you know, go from there almost. I don't know. Like I said, I don't mean to be negative about it. I just, uh, it's not the sort of event that really grabs my interest a lot anymore. GSL used to have this mystery about it as well, whereas, like, you really saw players that you never saw otherwise, whereas nowadays all these guys are playing every single cup every single week anyways. So, yeah. Hmm. 
not 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 that's not a reason to watch. It's just that's why I don't keep up with it myself specifically, even though I used to be very religious about watching GSL. We'll be heading out into the center of the map. Couple of queens, couple of drones, all coming through. Nexus on the way up on the side of Max Packs. Okay, coming in, and again, just seeing a little bit of where we are headed. His next few moments. As that probe gets all the way back home, Twilight Council and Nexus all coming up as well, so we continue through with all of that. Twilight Council on the way, just to start off with here, and give us a little bit of something to begin. Watching towards as we have ourselves the little bit of building up, and we obviously have ourselves the fuelings on the way and everything. There's going to be straight glaives here for Max Pack, so he is going to fall back a little bit on what worked for him in the first game, although. The first game is obviously Glaives, but it's Glaives after Stargate, so it works quite differently to the Glaives that you're seeing right now. And there's a couple of Adepts continuing away and down the right side, so they're just going to back away for a few moments, falling back nice and quickly. Like I say, we'll see what uh, Cell's preparation against this will be. Obviously, first of all, figure out what's going on is going to be one of the main things. If you figure that out, then obviously you should be in a fairly good position to get into the next spot of the game, so we will see. Another Adept or so just going to get warped in for the moment. Depths will begin to shade forward. Glaives is not too far off. Sarah's going to go for the Baneling Nest option here, which is not oftentimes the choice when you get into these sort of situations, actually. Usually you go for a little bit of a different uh, kind of plan of action. So that actually will be quite interesting for a few moments. See exactly how that uh, comes to play. See exactly how it comes to life. Things, Bane's coming up, the Dark Shrine, the Immortal all coming through. We'll see again, the Banelings will have a lot of work to do here. The Lings on the counterattack. One Adept here, not going to do much. Obviously, these things will not be at home to defend then. We currently have nine Banelings ready. I think it's going to be very hard for Max Max to do much. But these Adepts, as oh no, they're going to get crashed into by the Banes trying to recall. All but two go down. That's already a pretty big deal. In fact, that's already a huge deal. Things run down the bottom. Adepts are going to be there in that uh, little position, looking decent to hold on at least. But more banelings and several clearly feels like there's blood in the uh, it smells blood in the water. He is on the hunt. He feels like he can get something done right now. And do we disagree? I actually do not think I disagree. I think I'm all for all this. There's, if you know, if the banelings connect, there's not a lot you can do here. Force fields are buying you time, but can force fields buy you forever? No, probably not. Now the force fields are very much so going to trap you in. Oh my goodness. Things are getting uh, wrapped around on this Nexus as well, so that is going to be absolutely a bit of the deal right now. Ten probes go down, third Nexus is gone, and Cyril is going to put himself into an astounding spot right now. This is absolutely going to be incredible for him. Definitely heading in the right sort of direction. Absolutely heading in the right sort of direction, actually. As you just have an Archon morphing through, the Immortal sitting out up over there. A few lings continuing around the map. The DTs continue to join up together. His uh, DTs are one of the things that maybe Max Packs can use to help him get a little bit back into this, perhaps, but I'd be lying if I said I was super hopeful. Not really uh, too much of a believer right now, if I'm going to be honest, but 
I guess they will see what comes of it as we get the extra few units warping in. He's just going to send it for one big attack mostly, so let's see if it can be enough. Let's see if there is truly a way to fight yourself back into this. Sarah building up the spine crawler preparation-wise. He did have quite a low drone count when he went for that counter. It was important he did damage, but he really did deal damage, and he dealt good damage at that. Now Ling Bane Roach is going to be a question of numbers. Does he have enough to take on the tech units here? If he doesn't have enough to take on the tech units, he might still be in trouble. But obviously these Archons have to push through this choke. I feel like we've seen this a few times. We saw it the other day where it was basically down to the the um, the Protoss player having to kind of push through that choke point here on Solaris to try and more or less just kind of get you through to freedom and to actually kind of have a chance at winning this game. But then that's just very difficult to truly uh, get set up on. That's very difficult to actually make work. It's not the uh, best of times, that's for sure. Archon's coming about. We do have ourselves a few results still setting up over on the other side as well. Definitely still expecting those to uh, maybe come about for a little bit of something. Well, I mean, Max Pack's backed off. He didn't commit through in the end. He decides just to kind of go for what he can here. As so you have now, Ling's already counterattacked and finding a few units. Going to punish Max Pack for having a few units just even just forward on the map. Going to get uh, punished right now as the Zelts and the Archons coming across. And, well, the Lings do end up getting chased away pretty quickly at least. So that is some small benefit, if nothing else. Mortal and plus one storm as well. Max Pack's gonna try desperately to obviously make this into a much later game situation, a much later game scenario, but like I say, I feel like you're really grasping at straws. If you think you can make something like that work right now, it just doesn't really feel like the kind of thing that's likely to really pan out in your favor, but there will not be a doubter until things really are a bit more decided, I guess. So that's the Lings moving around. I mean, Serral's army is about to be maxed out. So this is where his economy, having just been a little bit better throughout, is now really going to start showing itself and really start showing its power. And the difference of what's in this game between these two is obviously going to make quite a sizable difference. There's a few probes going down there as well, but anything you can do to chip through the army of your opponent right now is generally going to be a good thing as well, right? So... That is typically just going to keep you in a great spot, and here we go. Sarah is going to find a jump in the middle of the map, so in we head. And as we get this set to roll, a couple force fields trying to come down desperately, honestly, from Max Packs. It doesn't really do much. Maybe choke Sarah up a little bit, but I'm not going to believe that that's really going to do enough. As we do see the Roach Ravage continue forward, the Zealots come in. Going to knock down a Spine Crawler initially as well, so just going to do very well on that. And this does seem as though we are getting into a better and better position. A few storms coming down. I mean, the storms are amazing. Oh my goodness, every single storm is going to land. Well, the storms are absolutely beautiful, let's be realistic. But I think the uh, reality of the situation is that this is still just going to be a little bit too far gone. GG, Serral is going to find himself. Game number one. Uh, game number three of this best of five takes a walk. He's going to be kicking himself over that game two, I think. I really think that game two was... Maybe not the best scenario I've ever seen, but like it was definitely a good situation for Max Pax. There is almost no doubt in my mind about that. He was in a great spot, kind of let it slip. This last game, kind of felt like Cell was on top of him all the way throughout, so maybe not quite as exciting, maybe not quite as exhilarating. Maybe not quite as much drama as we had in previous games.
Start on the bottom left and Max Packs in the upper right as we get things underway. Lap number four. Cyril up a game. Is that enough? So then just help him get through and to close this out. Start very promisingly from Max Packs. That first game, very convincing, looked good in general. It's definitely a very fun start from him, but obviously it's kind of just gone a little bit uh, haywire since then, unfortunately. It's not quite stuck around going in that same direction or anything at all. Like I say, a bit of a shame. Perhaps? Match gas and pool coming up. Next is in the cyber core coming in. And get ourselves ready. As the Nexus drops down from Max Packs on the upper right hand side, so gets that settled. The first few moments. Couple of queens, few drones. All being brought on up the Nexus and the Cyber Core coming through too. And yeah, this probe heading towards the center, heading towards that watchtower for a couple of moments there. Couple of queens on the way out. The Overlord and Lings continue to produce as well. Again, bringing a good amount of this through just for right now. Target coming through, next is coming up, and we just got ourselves the in-depth and warp gate coming through as well, so continue to get this on the go here. We'll see where things head over these next few moments as we have ourselves the little bit of setup continuing in. Speed is on the way, Oracle's on the way out, Max Pack's getting set up then initially with that uh, Stargate and seeing what he can do with it. See if he can put himself in a good spot or so. With the early Oracle Harass obviously moving away from just directly to Glaives, that really did not work out in that previous game in the end, so definitely time to look towards something else as a couple of depths coming through, Queens are here. I'm gonna go fight against those uh, adepts a little bit, Ling's still taking some damage as well. And we just have a couple queens, Ling Speed, all building up. Lings and drones all coming out as well. Just for the moment. Five drones on the way, the couple spores all continuing through. And Gateway's just going to be finishing again. An Oracle on the way up also. And a little bit of setting up still being done right now. In these early stages. Well, that counts for Forge, again, the Oracle all on the way through, as we do have a follow-up into probably, probably Blink, although, again, Charge is not off the table completely when it comes, comes to those kind of builds nowadays, so that also is something of an option here. So choices, like I say, available right now. And as you see, a couple of spore shots going out, Oracle taking a couple of hits. We have a chamber coming through as well. Just got ourselves a, a little bit extra on the way out here. Blink and plus one coming by, getting ourselves those extra gates all on the way up. Definitely pushing ourselves into that kind of big Blink Stalker place. It looks as though we want to be fairly aggressive as Max Packs as well, I would say, right? Definitely seems like that's the direction we're heading in where we're going to have a fairly aggressive stance to play out of. Plus one missile's coming up, Overlord's in production. 
Blink and plus one all coming through. And we have ourselves a couple of oracles still moving around on that left hand side. Again, plus one missiles, roach speed all coming up. Overseer, gonna come overhead, drop down a little cheeky changeling as well. A little bit of something out of that too, as we just have obviously some scouting potential and being given. So a little bit of something on that one. Again, robot facility coming up, plus one, plus one upgrades all on the way in. Hydra's on the way from Serral, so he definitely seems pretty comfortable about where he wants to go. He seems to be pretty sure about what he wants to start heading into. Storm's coming around, gonna go for a little bit of the creep spread. Let's just have a couple of nabs at the edges. Let's see now, a couple of investors coming out. Serral's very happy to play into some longer, <laughs> longer term units here in the form of the Infestors and everything, right, compared to usual, so not looking to be overly aggressive or anything. Happy to, like I say, let this set up a little while, it would seem at least. Robo Bay, the extra gates, plus two attack and plus one armor. We'll continue to build out a charge on the way in as well. And a couple stasis awards, trying to give Max Max a chance to kind of kite back into those, trying to give him a little bit of something there, but yet to really see what's. Uh, Gonna be so great for him out of this. Definitely hasn't been super incredible so far, right? Booker's just gonna try and get a queen. Several's numbers still looking good. He's gonna maybe get this Oracle as well. He's gonna grab that. Is not well. Shouldn't really face issues against the Stasis because he saw where it was fungal on the Stalkers. I thought could have been a big one, but it actually didn't go down. He didn't cast it. Clearly didn't think the moment was there. That's fine. I don't think it's uh, end of the world territory or anything as we just have ourselves the Lings and Hydras now pushing forward though. It does seem as though Serral realizes that his army in general is just, it's just good. You know, uh, plain and simple sometimes is all it needs. And plain and simply he just has a good force. Hydras against a group of Stalkers. He's got a couple of fungals to lock down Stalkers too. Now he locks down some of the Zealots and Stalkers in the back there, so quite like that. I do like that choice, I think that's a smart one. The Hydra's still coming around, the Zealots are still taking some of the damage initially. Just having more Stalkers warping in as the Storms. Max Max doesn't really have anything else he can do other than just warp in Stalkers. I mean... It feels like a pretty boring answer, but it kind of is the only answer that he really has available to him at the moment, based on what he was setting up with. I'm just going to go back across from Serral, so he's going to make once again a move towards the other side. Still trying to get out into some kind of a position here, make something happen. Hydra's and Fest is going to hold this gold base. In the end, I, I really thought Serral might have gotten further through. It really didn't feel like Max Max had much of a pushback. But, well, in the end, I mean, Serral's still improving to a better spot. He's now going to have Lurkers on his side as well, which, you know, is obviously a fantastic thing to have on your side. Lurkers are very good. It's a great, you know, it's definitely a great direction to start taking things into. So, yeah, very happy with that. I think, honestly, we really are in a, just a very solid spot right now. As, uh, as the Zerg player, we do lose a Viper, we lose two, Stalker's doing some work, we will lose a Colossus though as we do have one Abduct that will be fairly successful in the end as well.
Because they're still trying to make their way forward. Probably not going to end up doing too much here. We'll just have the Colossus coming through, chasing down an Infestor as well. There is that Infestor going down. The Hydra's still coming across. And, well, Stalker's actually getting a lot. Honestly, I'm impressed. Max Pack's found a lot in this fight. A lot of blink forwards. I mean, he lost a Colossus or so, but I really feel like he made the most of the opportunity as well. I definitely didn't feel like he lost units without at least putting up something of a fight this time around. So, that's definitely a bonus from what we've seen previously. Again, seven Zealots coming up. A couple Colossi, the plus three attack upgrade as well, all coming through. Things I just continue to cross. We still see just the units chasing down there, and we do have the Colossus going to get taken down already. And realistically, we're back on top of this base of Serral, but is it enough? I mean, this is mostly Hydras. If you already had some of his Lurkers here, I'd be much more of a believer. Then I really could be convinced that this would be uh, perhaps exciting little position, but as of right now, like I say, not quite uh, gonna believe in it. Not just yet. Workers are there now. There's only a couple though, but the extras are coming up. Like I say, that's kind of what I need to be a bit more of a believer in this one. That's what I need to really kind of get behind what we're seeing right now. Okay, I guess we're taking this pretty seriously, obviously, and uh, maybe this is in fact just gonna be a little bit too much by the end. Maybe there isn't much of a way out here. Even if I was trying to kid myself a little bit before. A few drones are going down. Max Pack still being aggressive. These lurkers, though, are putting on a siege. And, well, like I say, there's just not really been a great answer to that just yet. Can there be something that shows up at some point here? Can be, there be some kind of way, shape, form, something, anything? Nexus continues to build up on this left-hand side. So Maxpack still has a base over on the far left. I mean, that again gives you at least a fighting chance right now. A couple more shots going off as Roaches hunt down Zelts in the center. Disruptors are going to start pushing back these Lurkers a little, but then we've got the Viper giving its life up to get rid of a Disruptor. Look how aggressively forward these, uh, you know, some of these Lurkers are getting to. I think Serral knows that eventually he really is just going to get to the breaking point of his opponent where he just can't really stick around in it anymore. Lurkers continue to really own over here. They're owning on the top side as well. So there's actually just lurkers all over the place. They are having an absolutely great time right now. Time of their lives even, you could say. Well, Serral is up about 60 supply. He is eating disruptor shots. Like I say, if there's anything that's kind of going the way of Max Pack, it might be those disruptors. But again, is it really going to be enough? Based on what we're currently seeing, I'm still kind of saying no, unfortunately. These lurkers are getting way too much done and... Again, I just don't see what the big cleanup is going to be, or when it's going to happen, or well, any of that. There's another disruptor shot going down. GG's called. Serral's going to take it. He is the champion of Kung Fu Cup number four. Congratulations, Serral. Got it done in the end. Just a uh, pretty solid event from him. I want to say, like, he never really looked in too much trouble.